Hi, this is Sharon Salzberg, and together we're going to be exploring a particular meditation technique known as loving-kindness. In loving-kindness practice, we make some experiments in how we pay attention. For example, the question comes up, who do we pay attention to? Who do we tend to look right through rather than look at? Who do we tend to discount? Who doesn't matter? And what happens when we look at them rather than through them? When we include them rather than exclude them? The question also comes up, how do we pay attention? Are we present? Are we listening? Or are we distracted, scattered, fragmented, thinking about something else altogether? Are we open? Or are we holding certain kinds of assumptions or preconceptions, perhaps very old images of ourselves or others? And what happens if we let go of them and we really arrive in the present moment? We also look at the question of what we pay attention to. With ourselves, for example, do we tend to fixate or obsess on what's wrong, what we don't like? leaving out altogether the good within us or our sense of possibility or the possibility of change. And what happens when we stretch, when we open beyond that, not to be conflict avoidant or refusing to look at what's difficult, but how about a bigger, more truthful picture of all that we are? It's a practice that's not best accomplished through straining, or trying to force a certain magnificent great feeling. In this practice, we choose certain phrases, and the phrases are the conduit for how we're paying attention differently. We choose certain phrases, and we silently repeat them over and over again. The phrases are the conduit for the heart's energy, for paying attention differently. We rest our attention on one phrase at a time. And when our attention wanders, we see if we can gently let go of whatever has distracted us and bring our attention back to the phrases. Feelings may come and go. There may be no emotional feeling really at all for a while. It doesn't matter. The power of this practice comes from the complete wholehearted presence behind one phrase at a time. We silently repeat the phrases. We rest our attention on those phrases. Our minds wander. We gently let go. And we come back and we begin again. You don't have to judge yourself or feel like you failed. It's quite common for our attention to wander. This is the way we've been trained. We say the most important moment in the whole process is the next moment after you've been disconnected, after you've fallen asleep, after you've gone maybe far, far away. The most important thing is in the letting go and then starting over. We say that the healing is in the return, not in never having wandered to begin with. We let go and we begin again. We want phrases that are big enough or general enough so that we can offer them to ourselves and basically offer them to others as well. Occasionally, someone may come up in our minds and it's like a whole other set of phrases comes with them, and that's fine. But you don't want to be sitting here as you're considering different people, thinking, what about you? Because we'll lose the force of the concentration. As we repeat the phrases, again, you don't have to worry about what you're feeling or you're not feeling. See if you can be completely present behind one phrase. And when you lose it, start over. The spirit of the practice is one of offering. It's gift-giving. It's generosity. It's like you hand someone a birthday card and you say, may you have a happy birthday. May you have a great year. There's some verve to that. There's some energy to that. We're offering. We're blessing. Sometimes people don't like that construct, may I, may you. It sounds too much like pleading or imploring. It's really not meant to be that tone. 
but rather gift-giving, generosity of the Spirit. Common phrases that are used are things like, beginning with oneself, may I be safe, or some people prefer feel safe, whichever seems to work better for you. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. Live with ease means in the things of day-to-day -day life, like livelihood and family, may not be such a struggle. May I live with ease. May I be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. Live with ease. You can use these phrases or other phrases, variations, but settle on three or four phrases that express the same sense of possibility, gift-giving, caring, inclusion. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. In any one moment of the practice, it said that one of three things may be predominant. One is the phrase. One is the sense of the recipient, whether that's through visualization or just a feeling for them. And then the third thing is a feeling itself. At different times, we do get strong sense of connection, of warmth. Other times it may not be there, and that's not a problem. The bottom line tends to be the phrases. If you get very sleepy or things feel rote, then that's a great time to sharpen up the sense of the recipient, whether it's yourself or someone else. And you can just see how things unfold. In this practice, I'm going to ask you to sit comfortably with your back straight, but not strained or overarched. You want some energy in your body, but not like so much energy, you're really stiff and uptight. You also want to be relaxed and at ease, yet not so much at ease that you're way slumped over. So you're going to feel your way into what feels like a balanced posture for you. It's also possible to do this practice lying down, particularly if you're not feeling very sleepy at the moment. We're looking for that state of balance between relaxation and energy, between tranquility and alertness. The quality of loving kindness does not mandate a certain kind of action. It doesn't mean that we are determined to fix someone's problem, that we're going to lend them money, that we're going to say yes to their entreaty, that we're going to spend time with them even. It's a quality of the heart, wishing well, including caring. And knowing this should free us from feeling timid or that we'll get in over our heads or that we'll be too acquiescent. As we develop this quality of the heart, we also begin to see its strength, its power. The term loving kindness can be also talked about as friendship. My favorite understanding of the word is actually connection. It means we recognize that we live in an interconnected universe that the constructs of self and other and us and them, while useful in certain contexts, are really constructs. And that in some profound way, we're kind of all in this together. This doesn't imply a particular action toward a particular person is required. The practice of loving kindness doesn't make our options fewer. It doesn't make our world smaller. In fact, 
our world gets bigger and bigger. Our sense of possibility gets bigger and bigger. Our creativity gets bigger and bigger in terms of how we relate to ourselves and relate to others. Many times people feel kind of uncertain or reluctant to pursue this practice because they think it will make them too passive and losing discernment or losing intensity, losing fierceness, and really nothing is lost. Loving kindness itself is a kind of power. It is a strength. It does help us come from a better place as we consider our options for action. Rather than, for example, being governed by fear as a motivating force in what we do, what we say, what we hold back from doing or saying, which is also a kind of action, we find that more and more we're just motivated by a sense of connection. That's what's leading us to respond. Part of our experiment in doing this practice is exploring the very nature of the quality. So you can approach it with just that sense of, what is this? What does this feel like? If you approach the practice in this kind of spirit, it's actually a lot of fun. Then you can begin to look at the rest of your day. Chance encounters with a stranger. The way you speak to yourself if you've made a mistake. All kinds of things that may illuminate a real shift in perspective. I first heard about this practice in India in 1971 when I first began practicing mindfulness. And it was in 1985 that I went to Burma and I did an intensive three-month retreat just using this method. These are really ancient practices in a modern idiom that are relevant to our day-to-day -day lives right now. Today we're going to offer loving kindness to ourselves. As you sit comfortably, you can close your eyes or not. If your eyes are open, you can leave them just a little bit open. Find a spot to rest your gaze, let it go. If in the course of the sitting, you find yourself getting very sleepy and your eyes are closed, it's fine to open your eyes and just continue on. Let your energy settle into your body. You can begin silently repeating these phrases directed toward yourself. May I be or feel safe. Be happy. Be healthy. Live with ease. May I be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. Live with ease. You can gather all of your attention behind one phrase at a time as you make this offering.
different kind of emotional reactions may be arising. I don't deserve that. Or I wish I'd gotten more of that earlier. Or I need more and more. Whatever it might be. Let those reactions just wash through you as you steady your attention on the repetition of the phrases. You don't have to demand a certain feeling or reaction. Gather all your attention behind one phrase at a time. May I be safe, be happy, be healthy, live with ease. Sometimes people prefer to repeat the phrases along with feeling the breath, either the normal natural breath, the nostrils or the abdomen, or breathing in and out of the heart center right in the center of the chest. This is if you find that it helps you to have a physical anchor. For other people or at other times, that in itself feels distracting. And it's better to just let go of awareness of the breath and rest your attention in the phrases.
If you find your attention has wandered, truly don't worry about it. See if you can let go gently of whatever's distracted you. And with kindness toward yourself, return your attention to the phrases. You may start getting images of yourself at different ages. You can focus on one age at a time. And here, too, the same tenderness, the same presence, the same full, wholehearted attention. May you be safe. Be happy. Be healthy. Live with ease. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes or lift your gaze and end the session. <laughs>